Good morning, I'm Jason Ellis, and this is Tech Avail News. Today is Tuesday, April 6th. We actually have something very important to talk about at the very start and something very unique at the end. But here are your top headlines from yesterday to go to know going into your work day today. Starting off with some news that you may not think has implication in our industry, but let me tell you, it definitely does. The Supreme Court yesterday ruled in favor of Google in the case of Google versus Oracle. This was a decade-long copyright case. Uh, pretty much in layman's term, what the result of this case was Google used code from Java that Oracle owns as a base infrastructure for a lot of other software code. It was essentially their coders would use the coding from Java as a quicker step versus writing brand new language. Uh, this is what's interesting is that the judges essentially decided that Google was okay to use this copywritten code because it created A, something transformative, but also B, it created something that made it better for the public. Uh, essentially, they were saying uh, the copyright enforcement would have actually done a greater harm to the public by impeding creative the creativity from Google. So pretty much Google made fair use of this copywritten material. Why this is important to us? Hollywood is full of copywritten material. Uh, the court is pretty much saying that what Google did was a enough in a transformative change to nullify, to nullify the copyright. Uh, let me just make sure, making sure this is correct. Uh, yes. So the Motion Picture Association did get involved in this case because Hollywood studios are they're saying that Hollywood studios because they have not yet exploit their IP doesn't mean that they will. But this ruling is pretty much saying too bad. So what this really means for us is I can take a book and make it into a feature film and claim, hey, this is transformative enough, has nothing to do with the book, this is a new product. And once I have that film, I can then go, hey, I'm making a YouTube channel, I'm going to use a clip from that film, that film in my YouTube channel because it has nothing to do with that movie, I'm doing something different. Or I can then take... Uh, pictures and images from this film and make my own merchandise and you can't come after me because from this ruling, I mean, uh, Justice Clarence Thomas essentially goes, this ruling is now nullifying copyright. Right now, this is being targeted to software and to the Google and Oracle, but this is going to, going to lead to a lot of new lawsuits and a lot of lawsuits that it's going to be very tough for studios, production companies, writers to keep to keep track of it happening. Uh, this is you know it's kind of going. If I ever want to write a sequel to Toy Story, I could do it. You know, there's nothing stopping me. I'm going to go. Hey, this is something brand new. It's transformative. It's better for the public. I'm going to write it. So this case is pivotal. This is something that uh, copyright attorneys were following because this is going to open up a floodgate of lawsuits and and be a standing essentially so we'll see what happens but it's something that business affairs all of our attorneys are going going to need to watch very closely and it's going to put a gun under the studios to go what properties do we have that are priority to protect this is just a start it's something that we just all had to be mindful of, but also on the creative side, if there's a way to now take advantage of this and you have the money to back up a lawsuit over it, we'll see what happens. But keep a, keep a watch for a lot of upcoming issues from this ruling. In other news, HBO Max has given a 10-episode order to the half-hour comedy Minx. This already has uh, Ophelia Olive Bond and Jake Johnson set as the leads. Uh, this comes from uh, writer-creator Ellen Rappaport. Paul Feig is Paul, Paul Feig uh, as producer and Lionsgate TV. Uh, this is number two for a uh, Paul's company with HBO Max. He already had Love Life, which is now going into season two for them. So 
great for uh, Figo for getting this and a great order by HBO Max. The NFT train will not stop. Ashton Kutcher, who is always at the forefront of technology, is pairing up with Guy O'Siri, Mark Cuban, and Snoop Dogg to bring NFTs to now the reality world. Essentially, they are they're calling it NFTs the pitch, but it's going to be like Shark Tank where NFT creators could come in and pitch their, prod, you know, their product and see if any of these sharks would want to invest in it. I'm very unclear how this will work. NFTs are digital artwork, you know, gifts, imprints, whatever. What are these guys bidding on? Kind of going, hey, is this something that's going to be value, valuable enough to auction off? We'll see. Uh, submissions, if you want to be on this, have opened as of yesterday. And they'll start narrowing down come April 30th. So, interesting. But NFTs, I think, are starting to feel more like a fad. But blockchain technology is not. So, hey, why not make some reality show off of it? All right, let's get to some attachment news. Uh, the ABC pilot Maggie has announced a slew of uh, new series regulars. David Del Rio, Chris Elliott, Leonardo Nam, and Ray Ford have joined the cast. Uh, this is the project that has Rebecca Rittenhouse already playing the title character of Maggie. It comes from writers Maggie Mull and Justin Adler. I really like this pilot. I thought it was funny and smart. Still questioning Rebecca and Rittenhouse, but the rest is cast, especially Chris Elliott from Schitt's Creek and, you know, uh, Scary Movie and all that, uh, brings a little more justice to this comedy. So very excited about these announcements. Jennifer Jason Lee is joining the cast in season two of the Amazon series Hunters. I'm going to be honest here. I've never watched it. I really have not heard people talk about it, so I'm not here to bash it. I'm just curious how long this will keep going. I think Jennifer Jason Lee is awesome, so she'll add her very unique style to the project. So cool casting, just curious on the longevity of the project. One Mi Masaku, who is on a tear and really jumping off of Lovecraft Country in a fantastic way. She is joining the indie feature uh, called Jane, which is written by Phyllis Nagy, uh, who also wrote Carol. So you know this is going to be a very uh, classic project. She is joining Elizabeth Banks, Sigourney Re Weaver, Kate Mara, and a Rupert Friend already on the cast. Gersh is doing a great job for Wood Me's career. His house was awesome. She, in my opinion, was the best part of Lovecraft Country. Uh, she's going to be seen now in Loki. I love when a fantastic actress is getting her, you know, final, you know, come up and, and really time to shine. So keep going. Love this casting. I think Call Jane is going to be one of those movies that everyone's going to be talking about, probably for the festival circuits. The YA rom-com Sex Appeal that we talked about a couple weeks ago uh, and being uh, directed by Talia Austin has just did a big cast announcement. It's Margaret Cho, Fortune F uh, Feinmeister, Sky Jackson, Rebecca Henderson, and Paris Jackson have now joined the cast. Fortune, in my opinion, can do no wrong. I think she steals literally every scene she's in. So this is a great casting, uh, especially for a YA rom-com to see these great comedy names join it. Uh, this is for Hulu and being produced by American High. So cool announcement. So moving into our unique news, there are two very quick stories that I think are just funny and interesting. Uh, the first one, after being in hiding now since 1991, and for some reason, someone unearthed the Soviet adaptation of Lord of the Rings. It is currently can be found on YouTube. I don't know why you'll watch this, but if you're a big Lord of the Rings fan, you pretty much have to. Uh, what I'm reading about is essentially it feels like a game show, but based on Lord of the Rings. It's Russia. It's 1990s. So pretty fun. Uh, and in our second story... This is another one where you're going, it's IP, I guess. But Christine and Mark Holder from Wonder Street are going to do a film animated adaptation of Peeps. Let's have some fun with Marshmallow Peeps. They're kind of saying it's going to be Trolls meet, meet Smurfs. I think there's a big difference between Trolls, Smurfs, and Peeps. But you know what? 
IP is IP. And if you do something like, you know, Chris and Phil did for Lego, why the fuck not? So, cool. All right, those are our top headlines from yesterday to get you off on today's workday. Hopefully, it's going to help. I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a great day.